We're with Hillary at Blue Microphones. How are you? Well, Blue Everything. Blue Everything, sorry. Blue Everything. Yeah. Those of you that follow me know that I use the Lola's on all of the streaming <laughs> events, and it's rather special. Yes, it is. Yes. So what do you have? You have something new you want to tell us about? We do. Here at NAMM, we are showing off our brand new mic, Ember, which is a cardioid condenser microphone from Blue. Excellent. So you have a hand-tuned capsule from Blue, so your legendary Blue sound. We describe it as open and detailed, so very versatile. Vocals, instruments, Great. spoken, everything. Uh, and a nice, precise cardioid pattern. So we're not talking hypercardioid, but a really good off-access rejection, great. which is great for maybe project studios or home studios perfect. that don't have, aren't perfectly acoustically set. That's a lot of people, most of us, yeah. quite frankly. Um, what's the price point on it? That's the even better part, $99. <laughs> Jesus, Mary and Joseph, that's great. So yeah, so yeah, you can fantastic. add it to your mic locker or maybe really start building up a home studio. That's great. Um, and the streamlined design is good for a couple reasons. Optimal placement, yep. so maybe a guitar cab, maybe in a studio, you're making yep. multiple things. Uh, you're doing a live stream concert, YouTube videos. You have less on-state real estate Podcasts. taken up. Podcasts. Yes, great. Um, so a streamlined form vector, not as big or bulky um, for, for those purposes. Wonderful. And it looks cool. It does. It's got that blue. You know blue. Yeah, no, We sound beautiful. good first, but you got to look good, too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So I'm here with a very good friend, Mr. Bernhard from Nobles. Germany and Nobles. And Nobles, give me a shake my hand. Well, as my uh, one of our one of our colleagues who works for Sam uh, um, Elringman is from Reutling, Reutlingen, and he always says, "Why do you call it Germany? It's Deutschland." Uh, yeah, nobody nobody knows it. Forget yeah. it. No. Although, as you we just talked about it. Our booth number. Booth number is 1945. Anyway, it's a whole other discussion. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so you have some new products. Yes. Tell us what they are. We have the mini version of the best-selling uh, overdrive in Nashville. For this one is a best-selling overdrive in Nashville for 25 years. That's amazing. Right. Yep. And now we made a small version, basically the same. Fantastic. But it it has a little bit less space. A little bit less space. <laughs> But it can take from 9 to 18 volts, so you really can have different settings. Oh, wow. So, so you can drive it really hard. Yeah, so you really must try what is best for you. Oh, it's so cool. You see, they staggered the input jack so that the jack going in. That's a really nice touch. And That's I think it cool. may, maybe it's a best selling uh, new uh, pedal of the last month. For in December, we sold, we started 1st of December and we sold 540 pieces. Great. In the US. In the US? Oh, on the US, yes. Beautiful. Hey, Robin from Belgium. Hello, hi. How are you? Hey, good, thanks. Good to see you. At yes, Leapwing, yeah. we love this plugin. We've been using it. In fact, we just did a live stream the other day yeah. where it was a, a, anything goes one where I just picked whatever I wanted to right. do to solve the problem oh, and amazing. Leapwing solved the problem. I think it's one of the most musical because I hear it like, I know when you've improved it and you've pulled out those frequencies I don't want to hear, yeah. but it never sounds hollow. Mm -hmm. I don't know what your technology is, it's probably magic. Well, not really. I mean, nothing, <laughs> nothing is really magic, but uh, well, in this case. No, but uh, we, we spend a lot of time fine tuning and, and like listening and saying, okay, that is not good, that's good. And yeah, just like we spend a lot of time like tweaking, let's say. Well, you did a wonderful job. Oh, thank Do you, you have anything new or anything you want to talk to yes. us about? We uh, actually just uh, announced stage one, which Great. is the, the one on the right. That's our new plugin that just came out two weeks ago. Tell us about that. That's um, it's very cool actually. It's um, it's designed to change your stereo field in multiple ways. So we have three algorithms. The first one is width, where your center, your, your phantom center, doesn't get changed. It's fully mono compatible, but you can change whatever is on the side and push it further. So you have like one slider that pushes it outwards with a high pass filter so you can do only above certain frequencies. Yep. Um, and the second one is depth, where we actually create directionally optimized um, reflections. So based on where things are, very natural reflections. If you want to have like a dry sound, keep the dry sound, not make it like reverby, yep. but you want to have it extend through the speakers. Great. So it's like, a, yeah, like again, one parameter that you can add in if you want to. Very nice. And the last one is mono spread, which is a mono to stereo up mixer. But very interesting. Yeah, and what's really nice is that if you have a mono source or something that's in the middle, yeah. you can actually use it and it will actually spread out the middle just a bit outward. Mm. So you can make your center wider 
But again, if you hit mono, it's fully the same as it was before. So that's interesting because I think that's one of the things that I've noticed between mixing in a console and mixing in a box. Is no matter what you're doing, when you go through my SSL, I don't care how much. God bless him, Bruce, one of the greatest guys in the business, calibrates my console. Mm -hmm. There's always going to be some cancellation right. and some weirdness going on. Electronics are electronics. Yeah. And so it does create that sort of wider than natural mono center. Yeah. Which when you're in computers, yeah. zeros and ones are zeros and exactly. ones. It's, so it's in the middle. Yeah. That's a, that's <laughs> so, a great idea. Yeah, thank you. Well, fantastic. And it's Thanks. called Stage One. Stage One, yes. Marvelous. Colin, how the devil are you? Warren, how you doing? I'm good. I must compliment you. First of all, we were just talking about the booth design, like yours, to me, yours is the easiest to find. Look, logo, product. You know, we've spent booths, we've walked around booths with like the logo's this big and it's in the corner. So thank you for making it easier for us to find, number one. Yes, sir, and thank secondly, you. thank you for always having this super comfortable, like extra padding here. You stand on it. This is day four of walking around for 10 or 12 hours a day. Plus our hotel's like 15 minutes walk away. So we've been, uh, and then meetings, walking. Yep, yep. Trying to get an Uber in Anaheim is not a smart idea. No, it doesn't work. You're, doesn't watch, work. you're sitting in a massive traffic jam watching people walk back with some forwards. Anyway, so thank you. Thank you. All right, you have an amazing new product. Um, the 6060 Ultimate Module Collection. That's right, the most number of modules in a single plugin, and we got it. Just shipped on January 15th, and um, it's hot, it's new, it's now stationwide. Tell us more about it. I want to know more about it. Um, I am not a smart person. I have obsessive compulsive disorder, which means all the time, 24 seven, I think about algorithms, more algorithms, and all kinds of algorithms. And so, you know what? If I made a front, I can just keep chucking algorithms into whenever I wanted to. That's that's good for me. It's like it's like you know, um, what's the word? Um, therapy. Yeah, it's like therapy. therapy. So right now, it has like 35 or 36 models in it, and I got like five more in the queue, and plenty more like in a drawer in these shoe boxes, and it's just gonna keep coming. It's gonna be great. It's an introductory price until February 15th, and uh, so jump on board now or or don't. But either way, it'll still be awesome. So this ABB 16 channel analog processing box. Oh, that! That's the pretty huge. The APB 16 is the world's first programmable analog signal processor. Why is it so awesome? <laughs> it's awesome because it's analog and because it's programmable. For years, decades actually, although I'm still 30, for decades we've been working on software that models analog circuits. And I thought one day, wait, can we take this software and like port it back into hardware? And some of that really sucked. But some of it worked really, really good. And then we were like, wait, if that worked, and that worked, and that worked, and all of a sudden, hey, we can make a whole signal path here. Control it from a plug-in, just run it out of your session, do the analog stuff and back like an insert. Bam, who wouldn't want that? Yeah, this is a whole different way of looking at it because this is, you know, beautiful GUIs, G U I's, yeah, yeah. whatever they call it. Call. But these are control. They're not. <laughs> They're controlling analog That's processing. Right. So yeah, it's like so it works like this. The plugin, yeah, it's getting the audio signal, but based on the algorithm you pick, the plugin you have, the control settings you choose, the plugin is basically generating a control signal that is married to the audio signal. So you have sample accurate control of the analog processing. So not just like not this, just analog, sample accurate control. Then that goes into the box. The control signal programs the analog channel, whatever it is you want it to do. The audio goes to the analog components, comes back out the other end, back into your Pro Tools system. It's easy, just over a Thunderbolt, just you know, plug, play, go. But it is a new paradigm, it's a new way of doing it, and it's totally cool. Patents pending, hell yes. Um, <laughs> Anyway, but it, it's neat. So not only is it you know programmable analog, it's you know sample accurate automation, save and recall presets with your session, all the stuff that you love about analog gear, the sound, but none of the like pain in the ass. Oh my god, I have a recall. Which outboard gear did I use for that track, and which inserts were they on? All that goes away. So um, it's super hot and awesome. In my totally biased opinion, but that's why I work here. <laughs> I have a DSP who made this thing called yeah. the APP16. Muck Dowell, Muck DSP. I yeah, I mean. I'm really intrigued. I really am intrigued because you're not you're not working with any kind of stereotypes. There's no, no like there's no like you know everybody designs something and they go I put a ECC83 or well 12AX7 in America yeah. in the front yeah. here okay. and it's like you know what I mean? It's that they're, they're relying on a, a, a very 
Strong word, dogmatic approach. There's nothing dogmatic about this whatsoever. So yeah. I'm really excited to see what you've done. Yeah, this is like uncharted territory for a lot of people, um, which is why I mentioned earlier the introductory price for those who want to jump on board. You want to jump in the shame ship with us and sail out into the ocean? Yeah, we'll get you a deal. Um, it's still expensive, but yeah. I'm, I'm very happy to have been doing this for 20 years. I want to do it for another 20. So here we go. Yeah, this, this is going to be completely unique because everybody is spending their lives. And the, the, if you've been watching the frequently asked questions, you know most people, when I ask them that question, come back with the same response. They're getting asked, what does it sound like? Meaning, what is it a copy of? What is it a clone of? This is a completely new way of doing things. Yeah, it's it's new. It looks incredible. I love the look of it. Yeah, um, green is my favorite color, in case you didn't know. Anything sort of military greenish is always makes me very happy. It looks like it's going to last. Um, it is made to last. In fact, if you, the, the marketing lit, which you guys can take a picture of later. Yep. It actually, is, it intentionally shows several things. One, my 32-bit AKM converter. Yeah, the best converter money can buy. Yeah, it shows all the high-end fancy pants parts. Also, if you squint or don't need bifocals, TP, TP, the analog board is littered with test points. It's not just made to be great, it is made to last. And it's made, if you need to service it, it is a service thing, not a throwaway piece of crap. This is high end, the best we can possibly do. Oh yeah, I'm not screwing around. <laughs> God bless you, my friend. Where can I get one? Well, these are in fact finished production units. Yay! But because this is our first Thunderbolt product, I have to give I units to Apple Computer, and they're gonna keep them and bless them. And this process will take some number of weeks, but to their credit, they have already come by the booth at the NAMM show. Great. I've met some people doing the work. They're going to give the thumbs up. Once we get that thumbs up, we'll go into production. I'm thinking probably May. The marketing list says Q2 of 2019. My best guess right now is probably like, you know mid-May. I want one. Fat as I want how many? 16 channels. How many do we need? We need three. No, Eric, give okay. us three. Three. Okay, three. Done. Fair enough. I'm very excited. This is really, really smart. Very, very smart indeed. God bless you. Thank, thank you, sir. Well, God bless you. Congratulations. Thank you. You know, he told me he had something really exciting. This is really exciting. It is. So we're here with Trevor Curley. How are you? I'm very well, thank you, Warren. Nice to see you again. It's always good to hang out and talk Sontronics. Thank you. I, well, we've been using your mic since 2010 or 2011. I believe so, yeah. That was used to, it that felt like the other day. I know, I know. And now it's nine years later. Don't say that, don't say that. <laughs> when did you start? 2004, I started designing the mics. Yep. And then we launched at NAMM 2005, so we're now 14 years in. We're entering our 15th year, so next year's a big birthday for us. Wonderful, congratulations. Thank you very much indeed. And I think your ribbons are starting to move into the sort of industry standard realm now, which I think is nice. Very, very kind of you to say that. Thank but you. I mean, I'm seeing them almost everywhere now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, then yeah. people are telling me about them as though I don't know, which is really interesting. Wow, have you heard about this Delta <laughs> thing? You know, like, yeah, I've heard about it, yeah. yeah. That's great. Well, it, it's been a big, big change for us because we, as I, we spoke last year, and we launched the Delta II, the Sigma II, the Apollo II, yeah. which are all made in the UK. We hand build them there, and they've got some very special things, you know, hand wound transformers, which are made locally, just only for us. Wonderful. And, and these these mics are, are really very special, but we've managed to keep the price within the affordable range. Of that's it. wonderful. So, yeah, uh, that's very kind of you to mention. Thank you. Great. So what have we got going on here? I see well, you holding something. Yes. Um, I'd like to introduce the Nano. So Sontronics Nano. Um, this is based on our trusty old steed, the STC-1 pencil condenser, so small yep. diaphragm condenser, um, which, I mean, that mic's been around since day one that we started Sontronics. Now, it's well known for having an incredibly smooth high frequency roll off, um, overheads, that sort of thing, guitar, acoustic guitar, piano, really subtle, beautiful, without sibilance, you know, presence, all yeah. there, all detail. But what I wanted to do, I've always been inspired by certain other brands that have got the ability to actually 
hang mics from overhead and be discreet and that sort of thing. So we've worked on this for the last couple of years and we've been able to separate the capsule head from the preamp body. Oh and, wow. And it, it's not as easy as it might appear. It's not just saw it off there and move that over there. This is actually taking quite a long time being able to get the electronics in here to drive the capsule. It's a co true condenser, it's not electric. So it needs 48 volt volt power. Right. So that was a, a feat in itself. The, the little circuit board in there is quite something. Yep. And then separating that whole lot off. So what you've got, as I say, a preamp body, sits on a mic clip away. We've got this cable here, um, hidden under the box, of course. It's a five meter uh, Megami cable. So really, really high quality. Wow. Used in a lot of theater shows. So really low noise, fantastic for basically suspending the microphone. Let's think about houses of worship. So hanging from a ceiling over a choir. Sure. Um, it's locking connector, so it's screw lock both ends, so the thing's not going to drop on a, a quite a And master's film and head. TV applications, like well, if you've got a TV show yeah, and you, you don't want to have lots of huge microphones Indeed. all over the place. Indeed. Yeah. So when we're yeah. thinking about keeping the microphone a little bit of distance, yeah. it comes standard with this cardioid capsule, but in the package included mm -hmm. will be an omnidirectional capsule Very too. Nice. And this is just a simple unscrew. Yeah, screw on. So the concept is discreet micing installation maybe in conference rooms or whatever so we're sort of open up new doors in our market lovely with the Sontronic sound basically well congratulations thank you so much and i love so you got a lot of choices there you got uh, flat 75 and 150 indeed very nice and zero to 20 db absolutely meaning you can stick them on overheads you, on and this is the point it's, yeah. it's a musical microphone so it's a musical product that can be used in, you ask for the application it's it's your choice the Wonderful. mic will do it we got a module here you can see right now the uh, the green LEDs are illuminated, and that's showing you that there's level coming into the, the, the channel. This allows yep. you to see kick, snare, everything like that. So when you look into the console, you can just immediately go for something, which right. makes it, you know. My whole thing is to not be the groove buster, yep. you know? And when the guy, when they start rolling, I want everything to be like whatever, you know? It's just an extension of what's happening in the room. Sure. If you have to work to do something, it kills the mood. So I'm just, yep. I'm not gonna be that guy. So you've got these right here. Now, if you solo a channel, they turn blue. All right. Sure. Now, if you decide, like, let's say you're going to do a breakdown. So you solo these two channels, yep. and it's, it's just percussion. And then you want to bring back, like, just the guitar. So now you mute the vocals while they're solo. Now, when you come out, you can see that they're muted. Now, most uh, consoles, you can't tell. If they're muted, they're muted. Yeah. You don't know if you're muted or not. That's my console, the bulbs are blown. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and these are LEDs. They'll never blow. That's Great. another thing is, these meters are backlit with yeah. LEDs. Yeah. You can adjust them from the front. Yeah. And the meters are screwed into the main circuit board. So nice. That's been a, a it's a goal of a of a console designer to beat the meters. Sure. And I've done that. I win. Permanence. Yeah, you yeah. win. So you can tweak them any way you want. And the meters also go up to plus six instead of plus four. What's interesting, I was thinking about this. It was last time we talked about the console, and I don't we're gonna keep going from here. We're only here. I remember thinking to myself. Console design in the late 60s and through to the mid 70s was all about engineers building consoles. Yeah. And then it it felt like console designers thought in 1974 that they figured it out and then they never changed it. Yeah, you know, that's you, true. You know what I mean? And yeah. So I think you're the only guy that's actually carried on that idea of like, let's try and make it better. Right. Well, there's an Eve in 1974. There's, a, there's is an Eve fear. in 19 whatever. You know what I mean? There's that fear. Yeah. Of yeah. doing something that that's radical. Yeah that is, is not going to work. Well, yep. you know, I, I've made records. I had a studio. Yep. You know, I design stuff. I manufacture it. You know, I did a record. I did Jim Messina's record last year. So, I mean, I mixed it on, on our Tone Lux console. Wow. So, I mean, I, you know, so I'm sitting here. I know what annoys me. So yep. I make sure I design those things out of whatever right. I make, you know, and that's, yep. that's the simple concept. There's a lot of people that design good things, but they have somebody telling them what they want then sure. they go around they ask what the features are i don't listen to any of those people right i'll take it and i'll boil it down and you know it's like i got eight cents a guy says well i need 12. i go i can do 12 it'll be 100 grand right and then he goes well you know what i can go with eight <laughs> you know but a lot of people will they'll put that in there and they have all these noodly features yeah, yeah. and my whole thing my in my whole life of all the companies that i've done with consoles has always been to do 80% of everything 100% of the way, yeah. and instead of doing 100% of yeah. everything 80% of the way. 
Well, there was always a feature as a kid of really good professional equipment that it was so much simpler right. than beginner equipment. Right, yeah. I could never, I went into a studio, I'm like, wait there, a compressor has four knobs? I thought it was supposed to have input gain with the threshold, with the makeup, with the this, with that button, and you know, it's like, right. And uh, your head explodes. You don't have time for that. Yeah, that's you don't. the whole point. In the middle of a vocal, so, you're like, well, so we come up here, now I've got. Right here, I've got a fader trim. Yep. So if you don't want a console with faders, right. you can just, if there's a button on the motherboard, you press it and it bypasses the fader connector. Right. You can have it stop right here and this can be your fader. And then you can switch that in and out. Okay, that's nice. Another thing that's real nice, because so many people do summing. That's also is, nice from, uh, from like, I could set, this is my, uh, I just pretend this is my lead vocal. And I can, it, so this is full. It, what is this when it's at 12? It's, a, it's this exactly is, this. Yeah, it's that. Okay, so I could do, it's just to say this is my lead vocal. I could do, I could use this for my vocal up, vocal downs. Yes. I can engage it for vocal yeah, up, vocal trim. downs. Yeah. So it's a little trim. So it's a little trick. That's, that's, re that's really nice because, like, you know, you're printing the 75 versions of the mix. Yeah, I know, exactly. Yeah. With the vocal, without the vocal, yeah. with the guitar, without. Yeah. But Very there's nice another feature. feature that's called fader to zero. Yeah. And now, ah. and you can also do that individually on the modules. Nice. So that sets all the faders at zero globally, yeah. so yeah. you can do summing or mixing or whatever, have a zero reference. Right. Right. All right. <clears throat> then as you move up, you got panning. Yeah. Now we all we can do stereo panning. We can do LCR panning. Yep. Yeah. For uh, five one, and we also have an immersive module that does right. seven one on the floor and four on the ceiling. Right. So we've got that, you've got three stereo buses, and each one of these buses comes out, of, if you bought just eight channels, they all come out the back. So you can use just eight channels yeah. if you want. So that, you got your panner, then first here you got a, um, a single knob equalizer. Mm -hmm. And it, it boosts the lows and cuts the highs in one direction, boosts the highs and cuts the lows in the other direction. Which is a very handy thing to have that on the channel. Yeah. Then you've got a sweepable high and low pass filter. Yep. Okay. Now you go up to the uh, the insert. Now the insert knob, the insert controls have a blend, so you can hit insert if you want. And then when you hit this, now you can blend between wet and dry. Nice. So no matter what you've got, you can do that. We also have the blender over here, which does the same thing for rack mount stuff. So <clears throat> then you've got three inputs, so you can control all three of those. Yep. So you can sum. In eight channels, you can sum 24 channels in here. Or in a console like 64, you can sum all the channels that exist in the world <laughs> into that console. <laughs> then you've got two mono sends. So wait there, three, three inputs into one channel. Three inputs into one channel. And, then and how are you, like I'm dumb, so, so how are you sort of buffering this if there's a better way? I mean like, how, they sum together. They sum together. They yeah. sum inside. And yeah. you've got a schnizzle load of headroom in yeah. there to, right. to cope with like, yeah, great. So you just enable or disable, then you've got a gain trim so you can trim it. Then you got two mono sends that can do pre-post and cut. Then you got a stereo send. Now, I love this idea because in a modern world where maybe you have like kick samples or snare samples and a lot of the time, I, you know, I'm mixing on my SSL and I've got like my organic sounds coming up on faders. My samples are just coming down a pair of faders. There's no, there's right. no EQ, no compression on it. I can do it all in the box because every snare is going doink, doink, right. yeah. doink. You blend them together. That's great. Well, it's a blend, really nice, simple feature. You can blend feature. your guitar mics. Blend your guitar and mics. And use the preamp as the gain. Nice. And blend them into here and commit. Commit to it, you know, a great. sound. Yeah. yeah. Which I really like. Then up here Perfect. you've got a stereo, you got a level and a panner, and you've got three yep. stereo buses. Yep. So these can be used as cue mixes or sends or whatever. Nice. But you also have an external input. Yep. When you press the external input, if no buses are assigned, this blends back into the channel. So you can take a guitar, send it out of send one into an effect, and bring the effect back into the same channel. When you turn the fader down, they both come down. So now you can actually, in eight channels, you can bring in 32 inputs. <laughs> So if you assign this to a bus, now this becomes a separate mixer. So you can use this as a cue mixer, bring your playback into this, and still yeah. use this for tracking. So it's kind of right. like a split console thing. So that gives you that. Now, if you want the option. That I like a lot, especially when you go, if you went for like a 16 channel option. I mean, that's like, 
and you can set up all yeah. your headphone mixes yeah. or you can use it for tracking yeah. buses. Each channel has a direct out. Yeah. And if you need busing, we have an eight-channel bus yep. bus module that you can get that does left and right, pre yep. and post fader, and does level and pan on its own. Fantastic. So you can set it as pre, and now you've got eight more sands, you got eight more mixes for headphones, whatever. Now the the rest of this stuff, I've got the you know Jeff Steiger's Cappy stuff in here. I really like this stuff, so I'm showing that. But each one of these 500 buckets, they're all hingeable. Nice. So if you buy this console, you can get this, this, and this, and angle this up, and have your mic freeze there, and have just that, or maybe put the meter on top of it. Nice. Now this section over here, maybe you don't want the meter, so you just don't put it on, and you can angle it at any angle. This was this is the angle of the German console we did, which 64 in with surround. Yeah. That's the angle that he picked. Yeah. Now when we did we did Terry Lewis and Jimmy Jam's console. You can see his console is a much steeper rate. I love that. And that matches the Slate Raven. Yeah, I love that. That sort of reminds me of like a Helios yeah, or something. Yeah, well, that's the yeah. thing. And he, when yeah. we did it, he was just like, that is so cool. And you can see that he's got, number one, he's got three buses assigned, and that's the kick drum. Now, the right. cool thing is once you get out of... Once you get out of eight channels and you get into 16 or more, you buy the center section. Right. The center section has the master bus cards for these three buses in it. Right. And those are generic cards. You can put any op amp and any transformer in those cards. So if you You're buy reading my mind. I was just about to ask you what op amps or transformers in Anything. <laughs> right. So you can, right. you can buy the old 300 cards yeah. offline, you know, the, the, the old ones. Yeah. yeah. And you can make it sound like a 70s API concept. Which just doubled in price, by the way. Yeah, I know, exactly, yeah. because of that. Yeah. And then you can also, you can get the Tonelux amps and the Tonelux transformer. Yeah. So you can get 990s and nickel. Yeah. Or you can put chips in there if you want something that's just clear. Amazing. And you can just select the sound. He's got the API sound, which is actually Jeff's op amps. Yeah. Jeff's the transformers and op amps. Right. He's got that sound, he's got the tone look sound, and he's got the SSL sound, which is basically just the chips. Right. So right. the one, the kick drum, he's got all three of them on to get the right. sound that he wanted. The snare drum, there's only one. Overheads, it's two of them. Right. So you can combine whatever you want. And you can pull the cards out and put other ones in. This is genius, because... Uh, um, I was mixing an album and I, I tracked it on an API. I was mixing it on my SSL. I couldn't get the bass to sound like the bass. Because there's a sponginess that SSLs yeah. have that we love. But I didn't have the hardness of the 2520, which makes the bass go. Do, 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 yeah. And I spoke to Shelly and Shelly, you know, Shelly Yakos, and he's like, I was like, how did you do that? And he goes, he always, he always would insert an API line amp when he was mixing on an SSL right. and mixing bass. Right. So, very simple. Very simple. So, so there you go. Choice. Proof of the pudding is in the eating, right. as they say. That's really nice. So that's, basically, yeah. that's basically the console. I mean, right. there's, and there's a million things you can do with it. This is perfect. I mean, for me, if you're, you're like Reed, you're building a studio, you're putting it together, this is the perfect console. Yeah. Because it's going to solve all of your problems. This idea alone, we came to last, is really huge. Yeah. Because it, you really are. You're saying, I want the sound of all of these things, let alone the sound of something you've already built. Well, this module also has chips in it. It's not discrete. Yeah. But I've used uh, that corporation makes those those balanced input amplifiers that actually sound really, really nice. Yeah. So I'm using those as inputs, and I've got selected amps for different things. I took, I had this console at a demo, and Terry wanted to hear one of these consoles. So I took this module, put a connector on it, and two XLRs, and I took that to the studio, and we put a vocalist that he was, I don't know if it was Alicia Keys or somebody, put the vocalist through an insert, brought it back in, set the delay time so it compensated correctly. You hit that insert, and her voice just went like this. Yeah. And he goes like that. He says, I said I would never buy another console again. <laughs> and they buy a console. So they're, they're playing back this song, and Jam is standing next to me, and he looks at me, and he goes, he says, Paul, this console's like truffles. <laughs> Everything's better with truffles. Yeah. And that yeah. was that that's their that's was their comment. No, it's a <laughs> that is a fantastic idea. I mean, well, these are all fantastic ideas, but that being able to go, oh, uh, you know, moving this between a, a, this is fantastic er. Fantastic er. Yes. There you go. <laughs> Wonderful. Great. Um, are you are you building on your own pre's and stuff? You must have tons of different. I'm a, you put your name on a million products. You know, as we were talking before, yeah. I designed the Sunset Sound Mic pre for those guys, yeah. and I may I may actually fold that into my line and Great. sell it. Um, 
or I may do my own. I've got an EQ that I'm working on uh, that I, I think will be pretty cool. Um, and a compressor. Everybody's hounding me to do a compressor. That would be good. So I may do another compressor. I'll, I'll add to the hounding. Yes, there I know. Go. Plus I, one. Yeah. So I may do that. Great. But for now, I, you know, I basically recommend Jeff's stuff because it's great. You know, uh, People I, love his stuff. And yeah. It's, it's, let's just say it's of the similar quality to the person that it might be emulating, but at a fraction of the cost. And it also has really high quality parts in it. Yeah. And know. he's a sweetheart. Yeah, he is. I, yeah. I love him. Yeah. So, so he sent me all that stuff, and I, you know, I just I promote it. I love it. Great. So that's it. There, there's my uh, there's my spiel. Well, fantastic. What what are these uh, what are these retailing at? Right Ish. now, if you wanted to buy faders, eight inputs, and one empty bucket, yeah, it'd be about eighty five hundred dollars. That's pretty darn good. Yeah, and then if you each one of these is like. I think it's 580 for another right. bucket. Right. And they all have power. They, the jacks on the back are all the XLR, the five pin XLR. So right. I have a big power supply that feeds them. But if you have just a small one, you can just plug in, you know, like any of the. Everybody standardized on the lunchbox pinout, which yeah. I did back in, in 1985. I came up with that the order of you know chassis, ground, plus 16 minus 16, 48. So they all have that same pinout. Yeah. And this is all D sub. So everything is in order. Yep. You know, so it, it's it's very easy to wire. I, I we have patch bays that we use audio accessories patch bays which are D sub. Yep. So we can do the whole package. And I actually did Terry's side pieces. I actually bought a router and I did those in my driveway. <laughs> I, everybody wanted like three thousand dollars to do that. I'm going like, come on. Yeah. You know, so I printed it out, stuck it to it, routed it, yep. painted it, did everything. So. And how long did it take you? In the afternoon. The first one took a while. The second yeah. one, you just clamp and use the, the following. <laughs> ah, okay. Yeah, just, okay. Uh, and everybody thinks, oh my God, we have this, this furniture made and it's fantastic. You know, all the drawers match. Yeah, he makes one drawer and just goes brr, 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 and makes the rest. That's amazing. So, yeah, I learned a lot about woodworking <laughs> and dust. <laughs> so, there you go. Oh, you rock. Thanks. Thanks. Absolutely wonderful. So it's basically it's basically a thousand dollars a channel, give or take a few yeah. bucks. Yeah, it is. It's pretty pretty darn good. So you're talking about 24k for a, a 24 channel, then you can choose whatever op amps you want, transformer based, yeah, mic prees, you name it. It's yeah. fantastic. And as you as they grow, they don't yeah. they don't get linearly expensive. They start it starts dropping down. Right. Because right. there's a lot of, of combinations and at quantities, you know, you get better deals. So right. Yeah. Amazing. So if you buy a million channels, they're only a dollar <laughs> a piece. <laughs> you heard it here first. Quick. All right, you rock. Thank you. Right, man. Thanks. Thanks very much. Hey, everybody. I'm with my friend Robin Ashley. How are you? Great to see you as always. And his company, of course, is Phoenix. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Have you had a good uh, NAM so far? Pretty day good. Two? Pretty good. We're still here, still surviving. It's it's pretty chaotic. Yeah. This is the busiest Thursday, Friday I've ever seen. I think so. Yeah, there seems to be attendance is going up. Yeah, so I think I mean Saturday when most people aren't working could be nuts this year. It could be. Yeah, oh, it's going to be like this. Yeah. All right. I'd love to know what are your couple of new products you have. So we have two new products. Yep. One is something called the Nimbus which is a Class A discrete DI with our custom wound transformers. So it has an input, it has a through, 30 dB of uh, gain, which is always very cool for a DI. A lot of instruments don't have a lot of uh, level and really need that level. We have an XLR out, we have an unbalanced out, and a 24 volt power supply. Very so that's nice. very, very cool. Excellent, and a favorite of mine, because I use them yeah. every day, EQ. EQ, so we have a new EQ, it's called the Gyrator EQ, similar to the older DRS EQ 500. We've refined it, we've made some adjustments, some improvements. One of the big things is something called Sheen Control, which is very cool on vocals. Kind of adds that air presence to vocals that people really need. Now these are Gyrator EQs? Yes. These are okay, so can you explain to people what a Gyrator EQ is? Because that's not a standard active okay. EQ. So a Gyrator EQ was a design concept from the 1960s. Back then, people used to love inductor-based EQs. They loved the sound of them, but they hated them because they were big, they were expensive, and they were noisy. So someone came up with an idea, how do we get the sound of the, gy uh, the inductor, but without the inductor? And the gyrator is basically uses capacitors, resistors, etc., transistors, 
to basically replicate what an inductor is. So it's kind of an inductor-based EQ, but without an inductor. I think I have an old Cadet guest okay. from the 70s, yeah. and that has gyrator yeah. EQs on it. Yeah. And I do know they're actually quite complex, aren't they? Yeah. 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 So, beautiful. How much does this go for? This is going to be $7.99. Great. For those of you that know, I use a pair of Phoenix EQs on my guitars. There's something about the high end that you guys do, the wind yeah. boost. Helps it cut, but isn't yeah. aggressive. It makes it sound aggressive, but it doesn't have that harshness yeah. that you associate. So, really, really nice. I think probably Master Bus EQ as well. Yeah, definitely yeah. can do a lot of different things. The cool thing about our EQs is that it's kind of one of those EQs that even for the novice, you can't kind of mess it up. Right. You get some EQs that you do too much and it sounds terrible. These, you can never really make it sound bad. Yeah. It's always very musical. Very smooth on the high yeah. end. Great. Cool, excellent. Hey everybody, we're Matt McGlynn. How are you? Warren, right, I'm good. Good to see you, man. Oh, always good to see you. Um, Thanks. You have a new product. Always. Oh, for you, always. Just, just for me? <laughs> I don't know. Um, what is it? So this is, it's a rev of the Delphos, which you heard. Of course. And uh, the Delphos is uh, a fantastic mic for a lot of applications, but one of the complaints we got from people was that it needs figure eight. Which is kind of an interesting thing because if it's just a cardioid mic, that's fine. But we put in Omni, yep. with, which I thought was kind of like a free bonus. If you're doing gang vocals, throw it up in Omni. I thought that's a gift, right? But it's not a gift. Omni just means that you didn't give them figure eight. That's what that translates <laughs> to. So we, we put in the figure eight. So it's now in the big body, which I like better, uh, which has room for some fancier electronics. We did some cool upgrades to the power supply. Uh, not to be confusing, it's not a tube mic. Uh, but but this mic does have a DC power supply for the capsule, so we did some some secret upgrades to that uh, to, to lower the noise. Um, so it's got the figure eight switch, still has the pad on the side, and um, and the magic thing is we uh, kept the price the same. Right. So it's the new body, better nice. metalwork, better power supply, third polar pattern, still streets for eight ninety nine. Well, figure of that, I think probably. Um the thing, the thing is about your microphones and your audience, the guys and girls that buy your microphones. Yeah. Very geeky. We're very geeky. People love to know. Because right. we, a lot of people come from your recording hack site. Right. They know you yeah. as a, you know, and I don't like this word, but an expert. Experts not. <laughs> we know experts. Experts right. are the ones that are telling us we're doing it wrong. What I mean with the greatest <laughs> respect, you, you come right. from a place where you're trying to genuinely help people. Yeah. So you're going to get audience, you're going to get your your audience are going to want to know, why can't I have this? Why can't I have that? Right. And That's fair. I get that. Yeah. I'm a consumer too. I You're get a consumer that. Too. I want everything and a pony. And, the, so. and a pony. Yeah. <laughs> the figure of eight is great for rejection. It is. Yeah. Oh, it's great because it's so narrow on the yeah. sides. It's not, card yeah. cardioid's much wider. Yeah. That's yeah. So it's really, really good. I, I, and I hadn't even thought about this till the other day when I was talking to Joe Napolitano. He's using the same Tom mics as me, mm -hmm. but he's in figure of eight. And I was like, oh yeah. We're right. worried about symbol rejection. You stick that in a figure of eight, it tightens the pattern. Unless you have a symbol behind the top, which you're not going to have, right. it's usually above it and your mic's here, you I actually see. get less symbol Interesting. in the tom mic right. by putting the tom mic in figure of eight. That makes sense. It's also great for a uh, singer-songwriter. Yep. You know, you put the vocal mic here, put the guitar in the null of the figure eight, yep. and vice versa. So you get less guitar in your vocal mic, less voice in your guitar mic, and then you can do your EQ and compression more independently, like it's not perfect, but it's better than a couple I think of cardioids. We're talking about a good video idea. All right. I get asked that a lot because the reality is, if you're like up and coming, you're doing your first stuff, you're probably play an instrument, and the only other thing you're going to record, maybe one instrument, is a vocal. Sometimes yeah. it's just a vocal, but you know, the virtual world world now allows you that you can have pianos, you know, all kinds of synths, drums, right. obviously, right, right. you name it. But the one thing you're always going to have to do is record a vocal. That's right. And if you're an acoustic guitar player, which there seems to be an enormous amount, God sure. bless Ed Sheeran. I mean, he's basically created a whole bunch of, you know, another generation. Another generation. You remember, yeah. like ten years ago, everybody got into blues guitar because of John Mayer. Right. Yeah. Now That's we have point. all these these young singer songwriters coming up. Yeah, which is good. Yep. God bless. Keeps yeah. engineers busy. It does. <laughs> I'm with Andres from 
JC, how are you? Hey, how are you? Good. Thanks. We've been trying to meet for the last few days and it's just been like chaotic, so I'm very excited to be here. Um, firstly, actually, tell us about this new microphone that you have. Well, we have a, our microphone that's called Black Hole. Right. It's, it's, I believe that it's the most honest mic in the whole industry. It's no okay. coloration, super transparent and clear mic. Perfect for vocals. Wonderful. Is, uh, is there any particular polar patterns? What do we have on it? We have all three main polar patterns yep. and a pad switch. Okay, great. So you can use it like on drums, on loud amps, great. whatever you want. Perfect. I love this design. I know you've had this for a few years now. It's pretty cool looking. It's not like anybody's gonna like mistake that this is your <laughs> microphone. Yeah, it's really fantastic. Hello everybody, we're Chris from Bose. How are you? Well, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. So you have some new or newish products you would like to tell us about? Yes, yeah, I would love to. What have you got? Thanks, yeah, so we launched these last year, so they're relatively new. Um, this is the Tone Match T4 and T8S audio engines. So nice. these things are highly portable, condensed IOs with Great. all of the effects you would ever want to use in the studio or live. The reason it's called Tone Match is because it gives you the ability to dial in the tone of whatever instrument or microphone that you're using. So using right. this, you can dial it in and it gives you the EQ curve of each, each nice. instrument per channel. In right. addition to that, you can also have compression, reverb, delay, modulation, the works. It's got four quarter inch XLR balanced um, inputs, also yep. um, two aux outputs um, and two aux inputs. Excuse me, right there. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So it's like basically the highest con uh, concentration of, um, of right. connectors per, per mix. Probably really, really good for live. You it's great, yeah. Small, portable. So presumably you can plug your vocal mic in and also your guitar in and run them exactly. simultaneously. Simultaneously, yeah, exactly. Right. 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 And what's nice is the T4S is actually powered by the Model, uh, model 1 system too. Oh, right. So this, I have an artist I work with and she was asking me to ask you about this. Yep. Um, yeah, I hear this is a this is pretty tasty. She was driving around using the system. It's great for setting up to coffee shops. And, yeah, yeah, exactly. Highly portable, quick to set up and break down. That's the biggest thing we get from singer songwriters and musicians. What, what's the price play. of this ish? This is about seventeen hundred for that. Seventeen hundred with the right. smaller base as well. Right. So basically, they would have this and use it in conjunction. Correct. Yeah, and the mixer is four ninety nine, eight ninety nine, respectively, too. And this right. year, we also are releasing this carry case option. Great. So these are new for the show. So you can fit either mixer in the case along with your power cables right. and a couple of extra cords and microphones and stuff. Nylon shell, um, got a nice zipper here. It's right. great, great for carrying and protecting it on the go. Well, the good thing is, is you can you can go, you can be at home, you can dial in the sounds you want, you know, get your guitar sound the way you want it to be and take it, take it on the road with you. I love this whole new world now. I have a friend of mine, Matt, who's like a huge front of house guy. He does Blur, the Gorillas, and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. He goes to the rehearsal, he records it, and then mixes it back at home, yep. and then shows up at the show. And yeah, you're ready do, to go. You do your own mini version of that here. You could just sit there, work out the tones, the compression, EQ, the effects you want. And yeah, you can show up. save up to five personal scenes that way. Yep. That's great. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, it's also good for recording too. It's got a USB uh, output as well, so you can record right. to a, um, a DAW if you wanted to. Um, great for live performance and stuff. I actually use that. I put my computer next to it and just plug it in and record the whole show. So Excellent. in addition, you can play music back, so backing tracks from your computer to T4T8. Nice. That is a nice touch. It is. Thank, Thank you, very you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah. I'm here with Dave Kirsten from IK Multimedia. How are hey, you, my friend? Good, doing great. Thanks. Good. What new and nutritious products do you have for uh, NAM 2019? IK IK has some great new products, uh, several products for the guitar player in mind. There's the micro amp, which is a small practice amp uh, that also works as an interface. And there's an amazing new interface, one of my favorite products called the Axe.io, which has a uh, high quality studio interface, uh, class A mic pre's uh, for, for recording vocals, but for guitar it has a DI with something we call Z-Tone, which has variable impedance. It's, it's a built-in tuner, it has a reamping feature, and a lot of unique features for the guitar player. So that's one of my favorites. The reamping is really huge because obviously the output coming from a standard DAW would blow up your input stage of an amp. Not right. in a cool distortion, but total square wave. So that's really nice that you step it down, that you can just take it out immediately and bring it back into an amp. Yeah, and nice you also have uh, MIDI input and uh, for controlling amplitude. Of course, it comes with a huge amplitude package as well. Yep. 
software, and then you have a foot pedal, uh, two foot pedals. So it's a nice all-in-one for now, guitar a few, recording. A few people have been moving into this area, but your price point is pretty special. What are you doing this at? With all the software. 349. 349. With the software. Yeah, with the so, software. So, I mean, the software alone, you could say, is worth, yeah. you know, close up. So, it's a big um, deal. So we have that. Um, also, our very popular iLoud range with the iLoud and the iLoud micro monitors now yeah. has the iLoud MTMs, Great. which is a, the near field monitor of the 21st century. Great. It has uh, built in room correction, so it comes with a microphone to do quick room correction. This is something that, as you know, a lot of people miss, yeah. right? Yeah. You know, like tuning your room. Is, is everyone's room tuned? No. Well, this, this compensates for that. Yes. Right. Absolutely. That's you know, fantastic. That's easy. And which, which are the new ones? They're the. the yeah. They're right here. They're a little bit bigger. They have a wider range, frequency right. range. Um, down to 40 hertz, you actually, like, sounds like you have a sub. So you can actually do, you know, and you can tilt it in different spots. Um, in software, we've announced uh, Sample Tank 4, and I'm a sound developer, so I'm going to be doing a lot of sounds for it, and it's, I'm really excited about it. It's an all, like, all-in-one workstation. And the reason I like it so much is because there's a lot of great sample players and samplers out there, but because IK does all the modeling with T-Racks, of all the outboard gear and amplitude and all the amps, having that those effects built in and saving it with your sound. So you produce a keyboard sound to your song, you start off with a, let's say a Rhodes, and you're like, yeah, but I want it to kind of have, you know, like a phase 90 sound to it, running through, you know, uh, maybe a, like a CE1 chorus pedal. And I, I have all that hardware, you know, you Leslie's and all those things. So to be able to save it back with your sound, it's like, to me, that's part of my, it's a fast Swiss Army knife for production. Yeah, I've used Sample Tank 2 in my production, Sample Tank 3, but now with Sample Tank 4 streams from hard drives, you can have huge pianos and just, you know, everything. So, I mean, these are, you know, my kind of products. We, we obviously do a lot of gadgets for the iPhone still, iRig and various things, uh, but, you know, being a professional artist and producer like yourself, um, this, this is the kind of stuff that, you know, I'm personally excited about. It was great. Yesterday we were at the Lewitt booth, microphones. They're interviewing me with an iRig. They had the little tiny eye rig, and I was like, hey, look at that. So I like it seeping in everywhere, which is really nice. Yeah, yeah. and Good you stuff. know, the, the thing I like about it also is that, I mean, especially realistically, like myself, mm -hmm. I have, I've had, you know, uh, high-end interfaces, high-end speakers, you sure. know, barefoots and things like that. But these products are sort of like, if you're a beginner or semi-pro, it's maybe all you need. But if you're a pro and you've got, you know, uh, a huge multi-channel interface and Pro Tools system and everything, it's like, it's still like a Me Too well, product. You can have an Axe-IO, sure. almost like a DI box, yeah, reamp box. Laptop, Axe-IO, I'm in the hotel room tonight, I can put a guitar part down. But even if you're not in your hotel, cool. even if you're yeah. in your studio, yeah. what I like about it, guys like Tom Morality and Chris and it's a lot of uh, Dave Pensato, what they like about it is they have their expensive monitors sure. and then they have their reality check uh, I love micro monitors, maybe the oh, yeah, the monitors. Yeah. And the interface, the same thing. It's like, let's say you've got this big multi-channel interface, but sure. does it have variable impedance input? Does sure. it have a reamp? So this is just, you plug in a USB right there and then, and then yeah. of course you can take it with you. Yeah. So you have that sort of... Well, the iLabs are great for me. The way I have mine set up is because I have my monitor off to the side. You put your monitor between your speakers on a console, all kinds of horrendous reflections. Right. You know, that's the logical place to put it, but it, it's terrible for sound. Right. So I put it off to the side and I have the iLabs there. We can work on those, do edits, do automation at a lower level. I like the high end. I like why it's just a little bit hyped so I can listen at low levels right. and see if it's digital pops and clicks and all that stuff. And then I can swing around on my big monitors, blow my head off, come back around, do right. editing, go back. It's, it's really smart. And like I say, it's another way to check my mixes. Yeah. Yeah, good job. Oh, new products, what do you have? The, the, the craziest thing that we have to announce is, uh, well, we've got these Adams on the, on, the speak, on, the, on the desk right now. Right. We've just announced a partnership with them. Uh, okay. Where our technology is going to be found, implemented directly into their DSP. Congratulations. This is, Thank you very much. That's this, nice. this, is, uh, this is really exciting. Great. Uh, because we believe this is the absolute future of sound quality and yep. uh, audio quality itself for music production and also to the consumer realm as well that our technology can be found outside our own product family. Perfect. And we want to make sure that uh, this is as widespread as possible, yep. that uh, engineers such as yourself and for all the audience as well are feeling super confident about that. And not only that, but also for the people that we make art for, which is the consumers, the, the music lovers. Uh, so Sonoworks, 
is not stopping here with our own product family. You're going to hear a lot of news Great. about where this is going to be implemented in the future as well. Yeah. Really Wonderful. exciting. Great stuff. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, we're Freddie from Nugent Audio. How are you, my friend? I'm all right, thank you. How are you? Excellent. Excellent. Good stuff. What have you got going on? Uh, so the, the newest thing that we're demoing at NAM this week is the latest update for Sigmod. Uh, Sigmod is our kind of utility belt sort of plug-in. It has 12 different modules which you can have in kind of any order that you like. Some of which do sort of utilitarian things like the left-right switching module. It has a mute solo. It has a phase switch. You can mute like left, you can mute right. Yeah, so it, it's essentially stuff that's not always that easily accessible from the channel strip within your door, which everyone that uses. So like, for example, Pro Tools, doesn't have a phase switch, or at least not kind not of on immediately on the on the um, on the master bus, on yeah. the channel strip. So yeah. it has all that kind of thing. But the, the newest module, which we're really excited about at the moment, yeah. is the Insert VST3 module. Um, this allows you to host any third-party VST3 plugin within whichever door you're using. So that's particularly exciting for anyone who's using Pro Tools, Ableton, or basically any other door that doesn't support VST3. Right. It means you can now use that within Pro Tools. Sure. So the way it works is you can select either a stereo or a dual mono instance of Sigmod. Marvelous. Um, and then you can see whatever VSTs you've got installed. As you can see, most of these are actually ours. But you can, strangely uh, enough. Strangely enough. On our, on our demo <laughs> machine. Um, but I've also got a couple of third party ones on there. Right. So for example, there's this um, like free distortion that I found. Yep. Um, the really cool thing with this is that you can use it in conjunction with all of our other modules. So for example, if I add in the mid-side encoder and decoder on either side of that, this now, rather than just affecting the left channel, is actually affecting the mids of the signal. So it's a distortion, so we're now distorting the middle, getting, kind of getting that really horrible grind, but we've still got the, uh, the sides all sounding nice and, and pretty and clear. So it's nice. a little bit more of a subtle way of doing things. Nice. You can do some really crazy stuff like this, like a mid-side reverb, which is generally speaking not, not really something that you're ever going to get sure. natively within, within a plugin. Um, so yeah, that's that's the really cool new thing. Um, you can also literally just use it as the host. You don't have to have it in conjunction with anything else. You can use it on its own. Like I say, there's the stereo version, which is literally just one instance of that. Um, right. Yeah, it's a, a really, really nice piece Very of Very nice kit, indeed. If I do say so. so. Good. What else you got going on? Um, so, otherwise on here, we've got our Master Check plugin. Um, this yep. is designed for preparing audio the, for streaming. This is, one, this is one that a lot of people have, uh, in our academy and our community talk about. They love this one. Yeah, it's, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a pretty cool plugin and it's, I think, as far as I know, fairly unique in terms of its functionality. What it allows you to do is it allows you to audition the loudness standards and also right. the codecs that are used by various streaming services. So you can see here we've got a list of most most of the major services. So we've got YouTube, we've got Spotify, Tidal, yep. uh, BBC iPlayer, uh, Pandora, you know, various different stuff. And yeah, you can use it, for example, to say you want to hear how your track is going to sound if someone's watching a video on YouTube with yep. the absolute worst quality imaginable, you can select that on here, say they're on a really terrible internet connection. Right. We can hear A, how that's gonna sound once it's gone through the codec, mm -hmm. and then also with this delta button, you can actually hear what information is being lost. So sure. you'll find with this one that you'll be hearing a lot of really nasty high frequencies. On their own sound pretty nasty, but actually a pretty important right. for the sound overall. Sure. So Master Check unfortunately isn't a tool to fix that, but what it is, is it's a tool to let you know when those problems are there, and then you can go back and tweak either your mix or your master, and try and make it as consistent as you can across the board. Obviously, right. you're not ever going to have a situation where those codecs don't affect um, the audio at all, Sure. but what we can try and do is get to a situation where you're maybe, you're informed, you know what information is being kept, right. what information is being lost, and you can act accordingly, you can decide what's important, Am I willing to? Am I willing to lose these frequencies? You know, I'd like to do a video just talking about this. I think that'd be really cool because I've seen a lot of speculative videos yeah. on how that stuff sounds. I think this would be good to do. But also, there's a massive debate on what the best level of signal is for each one of these different platforms. Yes. You know, especially with, of course, so many people. You know, um, 
so many people posting their music on free platforms, let alone obviously Spotify, you know. Uh, what have you got in here? Let's have a quick look. I want to see what the platforms, the choices I have. This is okay. what have got at the moment. So you've got Spotify, Pandora. Um, this is something where I think there's a few more on the cards, but I don't right. know if I'm allowed to mention yet. But, um, but well, yeah. you don't, oh, no, okay. <laughs> there's a really big one that we're uh, that, that DJs like to use that's not in there. Yes, I believe so. Is that <laughs> the one that might be coming up? I, I couldn't, Can, cannot couldn't possibly, confirm couldn't possibly nor deny what that might be. Say, say anything about that. It may um, or may not begin with S. I've, I've no idea what you're talking about, <laughs> <Okay>. frankly. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we've got a lot of the different platforms there. I think right. generally we would recommend if you're kind of mixing towards a loudness target. Sure. Because most of the loudness standards, I think, fall between about minus 13 and minus 16 LUFS. So it makes sense to master around that level, right. somewhere between those, because, you know... I'm waving on camera to my wife. Uh, hello, <laughs> how are you doing? <laughs> um, so yeah, and then otherwise we've also got a couple of our um, sort of stereo width plugins here as well. Hey, how are you? Hello. Good, good to see you. How are you? I'm fantastic. How's your show going? Actually, early days. I actually got here a couple of hours after it started, which normally I'm like here, like at the door, like waiting to come in. <laughs> but I have a life with the kids and the family, and so I got here. So it's been good so far, but I'm excited about this. My good friend yes. Graham Coxon's going to be here tomorrow to demo it. Yes. Um, but in the meantime, young Pablo has uh, is armed with a guitar. Yes. We have a we have a lovely rock sound at the moment. We'll go through the Friedman pedal, which is giving like a bit of high gain kind of stuff. Then we'll turn that off, and you'll be able to hear exactly right. what's going through Sono, so right. go for a Pablo. We, we, are, we are doing our best to record this into a little mini recorder, yeah. so hopefully it will sound really good above this, <laughs> but bear with us. Cool. <laughs> Pedal. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I like those pedals. Don't get me wrong, but yeah, the, the body uh, from it's pretty massive. What are yeah. we listening on? What speakers? So we're listening on some Martin Audio, uh, Martin Audio speakers at the moment. Lovely. So, yeah, um, it sounds fantastic. That's sounding good. So, do you want me to take you through? Yeah, take me through the it. signal flow right yeah. now. So, it's. At its heart, it's still an audio interface, right. but the, in terms of the guitar features, uh, at the moment it's going through the instrument input into a full voltage 12AX7 valve. Uh, so yeah. that's giving you a nice sort of foundation of analog warmth and goodness right yeah. there. Um, it's going into a drive stage, which is actually the two notes power amp simulation. So you'll see that as I turn, it turns in the software. Yeah. Um, so that's what's giving us the nice crunch. So Pablo, if you just... <laughs> Then goes into the three band EQ, so bass and, and treble, and you get about 15 dB plus or minus on each of those. Very nice. Uh, and then into the two notes cab simulation. So we partnered with two notes who are known for their really good cab simulation, uh, basically just to provide this amazing tool for guitarists and musicians where you've got the, the audience kind of heritage in quality and audio interface. Well, we, we as far as like the the thing we love about Audion is the mic freeze. Yes. It, well, you've you still know, got those same Audion console mic yeah, freeze in this one. They just, just, they just sound great. It's a, it's a differentiator. Look, everybody knows now that the chips are available to everybody. Everybody yeah. has the same chip. From the 100 grand down to the 30 bucks, it's what, everything that comes around it. And that's the differentiator for me. Yeah. A nice mic freeze is going to make a huge difference. Yeah, so so with this we have the yeah, the same console mic freeze that we have in all yeah. of our products. The yep. uh, difference on this one is the channel one you can actually send through the valve and yep. through the two notes processing if you like. So uh, if you're recording a vocal or a guitar, acoustic Great. guitar, you can have the valve sort of warmth through that as well. So Great. rather than the transparent and very clean audience, you get a bit more of like a, a bit more character to it. Um, in the actual two notes software itself, uh, we have a huge range of things we can do. 
it comes with 20 cabs, um, but there's hundreds in the store and they're very reasonably priced and you get some good bundles and things. Can you use other people's cabs? Uh, you can't use third party cabs, right. it's just the two note stuff. Um, but yeah, there are. they've worked with some of, uh, of the large sort of manufacturers like Mesa and people like that. Um, so I guess if we, I'll explain all the different things that are going yep. on here, but we've got three presets on board. So yep. We can switch now and it's sort of changed the room. Yep. It's changed the mic and we can go here. So let's do a, this is our color sound. Nice. So we've now got this loft space and we've moved the mic like slightly further away from the amp, so you're actually getting some of the natural reverb now. Great. Um, we've got a sort of a Celestian Vintage 30 with a ribbon microphone instead of the 57 that we were using yeah. before. Um, and it just provides this hugely different sound sort of in all these different scenarios, which is a really good sort of versatile. Plus, I want to move into the loft. It's a very nice loft. I mean... What about the, uh, <laughs> we've got the, the crypt? What about the crypt? I check a maybe living there too, actually, to be quite frank. We've got the nice cathedral. Oh, yeah, now we're Give talking. this a go, Pablo. It's gorgeous. Lovely reverb. And yeah, so you can store these on the unit, and yeah. all of this is actually happening on, on the unit itself. Wonderful. So this is all in low latency DSP. Great. So there's no sort can of... I, can I see what it feels like? Oh, go for it. You, you know how it is with a guitar. I don't have a pick. <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the only guitar player in the world that never has a pick. <laughs> across to Studio A now, completely different. That's a nice compression. So what's happening on this for the compression? There's no compression, this is just straight out. Really? Yeah. Day four of Nam. We're all like barely standing up. Well, we made it to see Jay at Radio. How are you? Good. How are you? Exhausted, but Me happy. Too. Are you happy? <laughs> uh, I'm happy. Okay, good. It's been a good home show. Soon. It's been a great show. So, what new products do you hear of, have it here at Radio? Well, the big one for us for this show is the KL8. So, the KL8's a, uh, a four-channel kind of the ultimate keyboard mixer. Lovely. So you got an auxiliary send on each channel. You got level. That's just a channel on and off. Yes. Yep. This is a solo. It, yeah. It was for, it's to queue up your keyboard in the monitor outs and headphone outputs. Oh, I so see. So if you want to get I your see. sound before sending it to front of house, you can hit the queue and just hear that one instrument. Interesting. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And you got overall. You got auxiliary return here. Yeah. Uh, monitor output, main out, and phones. Yeah. Uh, very nice. Yeah. Monitor out, main output, both transformer isolated. Uh, and then we also have dual USB inputs. Right. So for the keyboard player on stage running redundant main stage rigs or, or soft synths, can yep. have two different computers hooked up and AB between them on the front panel or by a foot switch. Nice touch. Yeah. Very nice touch. And I see the remote there for the foot switch between A and B. Yep. Uh, main outputs bounce. You've got a ground lift on that. Nice monitor output. So that's cool. You can have that as independently like you're saying you can monitor it and send out to front of house yep like that 
Yeah. Um, there's your sender returns. Uh, oh. Well, those, so, this, these are the send and receive for the link. I see. So you see. can link multiple units together with TRS cables and build a much larger mixer. That is really toasty, yeah. yeah. Very nice indeed. Yeah. Um, and so left mono. Yep. What was it like in the 80s? Isn't it Elisa that used to do right mono? It was like some company yeah, I remember. It was, was like, what? I do remember right that, mono? Yeah. Because all of us are left mono, yeah. Family. Yeah. That was always one. Okay, so you got stereo there for the on the auxiliary. Yep. Very nice. What's that retailing at? Uh, Six ninety nine. Great. Yeah. And what we love about your uh, products, and they're pretty famous, as anybody who's ever had a radial product will know, is that you could probably take the brick S house that it's made out of and destroy it using this. I mean, the build quality on your stuff is phenomenal. Yeah. It's, we, we don't like to see it back for repair. No. Yeah. I doubt if you ever do. No. Everything I have is radio, and I have a lot. I have DIs, I have your little preamp mixer. What else do we have? Like tons of stuff. It's all like when you pick it up, it's like the heaviest thing you've ever picked up that's this size. Yeah. Really well made. Absolutely. So exciting. Is that, uh, oh, here it is. Here it is. Here it is in the flesh. Oh, yeah. There's some weight there. Um, great stuff. Okay, anything else new you want to tell us about? Oh, or anything else exciting? One other new uh, exciting thing if we want yep. to walk over here. Walk this way. Ah, what is all this? So this is just, you know, not a lot of people know that we actually do this kind of stuff, but it's a back and track auto switcher. So oh, if the wow. band's on tour, have multi-tracks playing, accompanying their music, of course. Yep. Uh, yep. Want to make sure they have complete redundancy, two different computers for playback. Great, yeah. So typically we've had, we've had the SW8 for a number of years now. They'll yep. have one or more SW8s. They'll have their computers, they'll have sound cards connected to this thing. Yep. They have a, a, a signal or a tone recorded as soon as that tone drops away the SW8 will automatically switch over to the other computer so right. any kind of problems or hiccups during playback switches over to the other machine complete redundancy nobody's the wiser nice so new for the show is the SW8 USB which eliminates the need to have external audio interfaces so now you have two oh, wow. USB inputs yeah two power supplies so you can be completely hooked up to different power it's really two interfaces all inside of one box but then all of the analog SW8 switching circuitry. So they have any kind of problems with playback, now they're into one RU, two MacBooks, the playback rig gets really small and tight and dependable. You know, that has always been the thing about you guys, is you make a tool to solve every single problem. I, I mean, enormous amount of products. And, I mean, God bless you, because it's not like you're gonna sell a million of those. No. You're gonna sell a, a certain amount of them but this is why we like it. It's funny, I, I always talk about this from a few years ago. I was doing a session with um, uh, Zach Ray, who's a really famous keyboard player. I think he's on the road now with uh, Def Cab for QT, but he's like a huge session player. And he kept coming into my studio, and whenever he would set up his synths, I'd give him a pair of whirlwinds, no disrespect to whirlwinds, you know, and everything was great, or whatever it was. And session number 20, he turned up one day with a radio stereo DI and said, this is for you. <laughs> and I was like, he's like, yeah, I'm buying it for you. So you have a DI that I like ready to go every time. Right. And that was, a, that was about 12 years ago. And that was like, even though I'd use your products, that was like a baptism of fire for me. Because there's a guy I respect who's working tirelessly on the road, doing sessions every day of his life. And he knows what is good. Sure. So, yeah, that was cool a big story, deal. for sure. Great. Yeah. Okay, that is the end of four days. It's been a lot of fun. It's been incredibly rewarding. Look at Jamie's gold box. Jamie won a gold box. <laughs> no, the Tech Award was amazing. Thanks to everybody. You all absolutely rock. I am feigning energy because I'm absolutely exhausted. We had lots of late nights and early mornings, but you know, it's a blessing to be able to do this. Thank you ever so much for watching. Have a marvelous time with recording and mixing. Thank you.